So, Jared Sessler, we're here at the Western Conservative Summit in Denver, and I just met Nathan, who is on staff with uh, Congressman Ken Buck, and uh, Nathan's also a pastor. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. And, Good and to we meet got you to too. talking just briefly about something that's a very interesting topic, and I want to pose that for you so you can get, kind of give your two cents on it. But this idea, especially when you think about the last 18 months and what's happened in our country and different things that happened with churches and our our ability to come together and worship and this kind of thing. So what is your take on what what you what role do you think the church should play in politics today? Well, I think the church should actually take the lead in that role. People always say, and they misquote this, there's, there's a, a separation of church and state. That's not true. That's not what the Constitution says. The Constitution says the state can't tell the church how to do or what to do. But so I think the church should actually take a lead role in educating and informing. And now you don't have to call it politics. You don't have to call it politics 101. You just teach God's word. And it will show us about serving and working in the realm of politics from man's perspective. Yeah, it's interesting. And uh, there's so much hope, right? Absolutely. You know, uh, our, uh, I think, I believe that the majority of our hope comes from a clear understanding of the gospel. And we could talk for a while on that. But isn't it interesting to you to know that most of our framers for this country were faith-based men and women? And that when when those men who came together to create the you know the Constitution and our Declaration of Independence, those guys in Congress, and this is part of public record, got on their knees and prayed to God. And and it seems astounding to me that we can have a Congress that prays. Even today, there is a prayer room, a prayer chapel, and I've been in it in mm -hmm. the Capitol building. Right. But somehow we can't bring politics into church. Yeah, it, it, it's hypocrisy at its finest. And, and again, part of the problem is bringing politics into the church actually works for Democrats, liberals, progressives, whatever verbiage one wants to attach to them. Because unfortunately, a lot of the pastors or so-called pastors are people who line up with that group of folks. And so they don't mind, it just depends on which church you really yeah. want to talk about. So if yeah. you have a pastor, in my humble opinion, who really wants to preach and teach God's word and use politics even as a perspective of what's going on with God's word, it's very simple to make sure that politics is involved in everything that happens in the church. Sunday sermons, Sunday school lessons, uh, Bible studies, even prayer services, because yeah. the Bible tells us to pray for our leaders. So, so how how does a pastor? And and I want to be sure that we're not coming across as though we're condemning anyone for what they're oh, doing. Oh, absolutely. But how does not. a pastor in a church be politically minded without coming across as a politician? It's very simple. Uh, when Jesus was talking to some of the disciples, they said, well, what about this? And how are we going to pay the taxes? What are we going to do this? And Jesus simply said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and render unto God what is God's. Yeah. It's that simple. Yeah. So, and so there's nothing else that needs to be done but to make sure that when we are dealing with individuals, we are telling them the truth of God's word. Yeah. Because God's word is all-knowing, all-encompassing, and there's nothing that a man or a woman will ever go through that is not already included in the Bible. Yeah, that's very true. So tell me from your perspective, what threats, because this is all about the future, like what, what happens right. to us in the future, what threats do you feel like we're facing as conservatives as a result of our application to get involved in politics? Well, we're seeing it right now in Canada. They keep arresting pastors. They just arrested one young man, I can't remember his name, for having an outside service. Because remember, their, their ban was on having church service on the inside. He had a service, a service outside, and they still arrested him. So it wasn't that they had the service so much 
violating the law of being inside. It was that he was preaching and teaching Jesus. And so the threat is they're trying to get us to stray away from the truth of who Christ is and who he is in our life. And I tell people all the time, it's whose I am. Yeah, I belong to exactly, Jesus. Exactly. And as long as we share that, we walk that, we live that, we exemplify that, that's what they're afraid of. And so the danger is that you and I and Casper and whoever else it may be, they don't want us to come together and talk the truth of the Bible and the gospel and who Jesus really is because that's a threat to the tyranny that they're pushing forth right now. Yeah, so sad. One one last question. Yes, I sir. had, it, actually he was a, uh, on the board at, at a church uh, locally for me, came to me and asked me, this was uh, prior to the 2020 election, and he said, well, who do you think we should vote for? That's some, this is somebody who's a, an elder in a church, <laughs> in a Christian <laughs> church. And his, his, his comment was, well, don't you think we should give the other side a chance? I mean, we've had it for four years, and you know. And so to me, it's demonstration of the ignorance of the real threat that is upon us. You know? So I appreciate your time, Nathan. Yes, Thank sir. you very much. To everybody watching, again, Jared Sessler coming to you live from the Western Conservative Summit in Denver, meeting great people like Nathan, and um, we'll, we'll get some more videos out live as well. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to be praying with you and praying for you, man. Yeah, thank you, brother. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Call if you have your number, anything I can do. I appreciate it. You have American values do not align with leftists because they hate America. We must engage by giving our dollars and our talents to defend our great American values. Visit jaredsessler.com to donate and get involved. Say yes to America.